Good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I'm uh, back on uh, my regular schedule at 9 p.m. to do lives speaking about important issues of the day. Today, we're going to speak about the First Amendment and the some very, very important questions surrounding the state's involvement in interfering with our right to criticize the state and how they react. And so we're going to have a discussion about that. So Michelle is helping me out today and we're getting people, different people to join. So let's wait. Uh, Michelle, anyone where they're coming in from there? They're not saying yet. Okay. Coming so we have people coming in. We'll just let, let people start. It's a little bit late. It's 925 uh, and we'll wait for people to join. But um, hello, how are you? Okay. We have people coming in. Someone says vote red. Hi, gang. Hi, Dr. Shiva. Yeah. One of the things is, as we know, is the Facebook fellows and the Twitter are so afraid of truth that they're starting to, you know, do all sorts of uh, uh, gamesmanship. We have Brandon Harsh from Ashby, Massachusetts. Great to have you, Brandon. Um, good to have you. We have uh, Andy Sullivan from Twitter. I mean, from uh, Worcester. Sorry, Andy from uh, Worcester. Twitter's on my mind, and you'll understand why. Uh, California, Hershey, Pennsylvania, Texas, uh, Maryville, Tennessee, Cape Cod. Good to have you, Tammy Dubé from uh, Cape Cod, which is south of where I am up here in Belmont. Uh, Shiva, what's up in Minnesota in the house? Good to have you. Uh, who else? Anyone there, Michelle? Florida, Massachusetts. It's great to have, um, you know, when we first did this, we used to get a lot of people from outside of Massachusetts, and we love getting those people outside of the United States. Um, and the news sort of has flowed back into Massachusetts. Uh, typically, um, in social media, um, it's organized in such a way that Twitter is really good for global reach and Facebook is really good for a local reach. And we have a lot more people joining. This is great. Swansea, Shannon Langford. We have, um, we have Shannon and a number of people joining in from uh, Swansea, Jennifer Betancourt, Shannon Langford from Lowell. Great to have you guys. Um, and New Jersey, Texas. Texas. Okay. Ontario, Canada, Melbourne, Australia, Minnesota, Charlton, Massachusetts. Great to have you, Missouri. Uh, great. Well, let me, uh, we have about uh, 600, 700 people here live. And how many do we have there, Michelle? A couple hundred? Good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start. Let me, first of all, uh, do some uh, housekeeping. Everyone knows that I'm running for United States Senate. And, and we'll come back to this. Those of you also know that our campaign is moving full steam ahead in spite of the election fraud that took place in Massachusetts. So part of our campaign and part of the lives is to let all of you know that we're moving forward with our campaign with a write-in campaign. And we're uh, handing out lots and lots of these cards. I'm getting a little bit, uh, but these cards are being put up everywhere, as you can see there or here. Um, it basically says write-in, Dr. Shiva, U.S. Senate, stop election fraud. As many of you know, we were headed for a landslide victory. They were so afraid of one of us coming bottoms up that they executed election fraud and they think they're going to get away with this, but they have a big problem because we actually know how they did it and we're exposing it. So we're telling everyone to write us in. And just to give you a point of reference, in the county of Franklin, where an 80, 90% of the towns count by hand, we won there. In the hand counted vo uh, votes, we won. OK, in that entire county, in every other county, the fool that we ran against where it's nowhere to be found, can barely talk as a complete doofus, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40. So we win by six to seven points in the town that was hand counted and we lose by 20 points where it was machine counted. So anyway, we're not walking away. We're moving forward with Shiva for Senate. And I'll come back to you that one of the most important things of doing the lives is I'm going to be keeping inserting throughout this conversation that everyone we needs to know that we're doing a write-in campaign. In order to write in, when people get the ballot, there is a space on the ballot where, let me bring this up a little bit bigger, there is a space on the ballot where people can write in the name and then they have to fill in the circle. So they can write in Dr. Shiva and fill in the circle for us and these will then get hand counted, which means the ballots, not this card. So that's one of the bookkeeping, we'll come back to this. Um, if people have been watching over the next last two weeks, since I started exposing this election fraud issue, the object of my um, attack on this was a secretary of state who's an elected official, okay? He's the elected official 
in Massachusetts. He's a public official. He's part of the state. And I was attacking the Secretary of State, uh, sharing the facts and exposing, sharing public documents, showing that they violated federal law. The federal law clearly states that any records, any documentation generated in the course of an election must be saved for 22 months. And um, just to give you guys an idea of this, um, re this uh, earlier this today, I tweeted out um, the actual federal law and, and it's right up here. Let me bring it up right here so everyone can see it. And here it is, okay? So this is, there's a, there's a wonderful document, a legal analysis that's been done. And I'll bring it up here by the Justice Department. And if people can see it here, I think you all can see it here. I think it's coming up, okay? This is a legal document done by the Justice Department uh, analysis, which is right here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And it says, uh, this is retention of federal election records, 52 USC 2071. And it's a highlighted section here. It says, in recognition uh, of this fact, and they're talking about the voting rights violation, and the length of time it can take for credible evidence suggesting election fraud or voting rights violation to develop, and this is what I'm asserting, Congress enacted Section 20701 of the United States Code, which is basically law, which says to require that documentation, documentation means all documentation, all records generated in connection with the voting and registration process be retained for 22 months. So a ballot image, when you put that, um, and when you put your ballot through the scanner, it gets converted to a ballot image. It's, it's a new document, an electronic document that's generated. And that has to be, because it's generated in connection with voting process or the registration process, in this case, the voting process, it has to be retained. Uh, if it pertained to an election that included a federal candidate, well, I'm a US Senate federal candidate. Then it says, absent the statute, the disposition of the election documentation would be subject solely to state law. So what that means is that this law was enacted uh, because the states could do cheating. They could do whatever they wanted. But when it came to a federal election, it clearly said that any documentation generated must be preserved for 22 months. So anyway, I was uh, uh, clearly, as I found out the fraud that took place in the stealing of our election, I started sharing that. We started finding out that in those voting systems, they have the ability to fractionalize votes. In fact, weight votes. So I'm running against one of you and you get a hundred votes, I get a hundred votes. During that tabulation process in the electronic systems, they could multiply for every one vote you got by three. So you get 300 votes and have my votes, I get 50 votes, okay? So when that happens, you wanna go to see, if you got 350 votes in that case, there must be 350 ballot images because originally we had 100 votes for you and 100 votes for me, which meant only 200 ballot images. So we asked for the ballot images. And you know what? The state of Massachusetts told us, oh, we don't have to save the ballot images. Well, that's not true. So I started, as I just read the federal law, so I started sharing this all on Twitter, telling the truth. And what happens? First of all, uh, we find out that a lot of very, very dumb and stupid journalists who believe that someone like me who comes bottoms up, frankly, they're probably racist and they're probably, do not, and they're probably uh, classist. They probably don't support working people, the working class. So they basically thought, you know, I'm making something up. They don't even bother reading the federal law. So they made up fake facts. And then the secretary of state, independent of this, who I'm exposing on the internet, you guys may have seen this, that these tweets started going wild because I said Massachusetts destroyed the ballots. Why did I say that? Because a ballot images, which is a scanning of that ballot, is the ballot because that is the object which is being tabulated and they destroyed them. So those tweets started going viral. Now, I'm using Twitter as an open forum to discuss my views. I'm a US Senate federal candidate criticizing the state, in this case, the Secretary of State. What does the Secretary of State's office do? They, instead of going in the open uh, exchange of ideas, instead of debating their position out, they call this Twitter, and we have evidence of that, they contacted Twitter and told them to shut down my account. I'm a US Senate federal candidate. I'm a citizen. I'm running for federal office. 
There's 35 days at that time left in the campaign. So if they shut me down for seven days, that's 20% of my time. Every hour matters because as you know, many of you know, I work very, very hard and our volunteers work. So they shut us down. So think about this. Here is Twitter, which is a private company. I'm a private citizen exposing the state in this medium of exchange of ideas. The state contacts Twitter to shut me down. Okay. Forget about the election integrity issues for a time. But the question is, is that right? What do you guys think about that? And as you're thinking about that, let me point out something very, very important. The First Amendment, you know, was enacted. It was one of the, it was part of the Bill of Rights. It's the first, uh, the, the, the first, you know, 10 uh, amendments are denoted as a Bill of Rights. And when the Bill of Rights was putting together, James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, um, you know, wanted to have a very tight federalist government, which means the uh, you know, it was a lot, of, lot more we call federal government power. And people like uh, Payne were against this. They didn't uh, want this uh, because they thought it would literally, uh, uh, you know, would be too much uh, uh, power in the central government. So the anti-federalists, um, out of that struggle, they got the Bill of Rights. And the first amendment of the Bill of Rights was really saying that we have the right to criticize and petition the government. That's it. It's one of the most important reasons that the First Amendment was created, that I or you could criticize the government. Okay? So just let that sink in. That if I'm a senator, you have the right to critique me. If I'm a congressman, you can critique me. If I'm a secretary of state, you can critique me. So it's really important to understand, in addition, the right to peaceful assembly, you know, um, the right to protest. The, the second, uh, the, I'm sorry, the First Amendment was really created so we could petition, which means argue, expose, critique the government, in this case, the state of Massachusetts. So here, I'm openly sharing public information as a U.S. Senate candidate on top of it and critiquing the government. And the government calls, you know, the Jack Dorsey people over at Twitter and they have me shut down. Just let, just let that sink in. Because what you realize is this is probably the most grossest violation of the First Amendment. And as you may know, I've been involved in various First Amendment struggles. I recognize that you shouldn't be defaming and libeling people, that that doesn't give you the rights. Um, you know, to, that you, will, you, can be, you can be sued for that. I've sued people and won, like Gawker uh, Media. On the other hand, the government doesn't have a right to also contain free speech. Um, we went after, we are going after uh, Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, as well as the Republican governor when we did the free speech rally at the Boston Common. They told, they dog whistled everyone saying I was a white supremacist. 40,000 people came up to shut down that free speech event, okay? That's not right. That was the government, the state being involved. But in this case, I am actually critiquing the state which is what the First Amendment was, one of the foundations of it was created for. And in response to that, they called Twitter to shut me down. And that's really what we want to look at. And one of the other tweets I shared, which I'll go over here and look at again today, is I challenge, um, because the assumption is that, you know, that, um, you know, everything's fine with election law. And one of the things I did, as you can see in my Twitter here, um, I went and posted, I challenged uh, Mr. Jack Dorsey, who uh, thinks he's above the law. And uh, I asked a couple of questions, and this is one of them. I'll share this tweet with you. I said, why must it take an MIT PhD with four degrees, including an electrical engineering and computer science, and with 45 years of programming experience to expose criminal features in the United States voting systems to destroy ballot images and to multiply our vote by fractions? I said, I challenge any journalist to open debate to prove me wrong. And, the, and these journalists who were doing this were out there literally cutting and copying lies, saying that ballot images, oh, they don't need to be stored, that it's only the paper. It's not true. They're part of the chain of custody. And I had a, the inventor of the, one of the early voting systems on yesterday. He confirmed that it's part of the chain of custody. So. No, I, I'm into open debate. I don't see any of the journalists coming here to have an open debate. I haven't libeled anyone. I, I'm asking literally for an open debate and we haven't seen that. 
me show you this other thing. So in addition to that, I asked, um, uh, I asked a question and uh, this was a question. And the question was, what if the Massachusetts election division contacted Twitter to turn off a US Senate candidate's account as he was exposing the violation of federal law by not storing, which means destroying ballot images. And what if Twitter complied and shut down his account for seven days amidst the federal election? So just think about it. If the Secretary of Elections of the United States, uh, let's say they were being critiqued by Joe Biden and uh, or Donald Trump, what would happen if the Secretary of, of or the Elections Division had contacted Twitter and said, hey, shut down Donald Trump or shut down Biden. I'm sure both sides on the left or right would be appalled at this. Would, would be absolutely, you know, you, you, it'd be, this would be front, front page news everywhere. But perhaps it's a fact that um, I'm going at one of the most important issues that this is gonna expose a lot of people and people are keeping mum about it. In fact, I put this out there today, as you can see, or ye yesterday, and this is another tweet that I put out. And by the way, what's fascinating is my Twitter account has stayed at 259,000 uh, for the last six months. And you can see Jack Dorsey is eating away my followers. It's another thing. And this is Jack Dorsey who claims he's, a, he's for people of color and all this. I frankly think he's, he's a big tech racist fellow. Um, but what I said was I'll give Jack Dorsey $10 million to prove Twitter did not communicate with the Secretary of State Elections Division to shut down my account for seven days as I was amidst exposing their destruction of ballot images. I'm a US Senate, Senate federal candidate election interference is criminal. So that's really one of the, what I wanted to share with everyone today, that that our campaign for Sheba for Senate, as you know, is always at the forefront. Our campaign is not just, oh, we just want to win the Senate seat. Our campaign is a movement. And as we move, we face our adversaries and we fight them. So we're not walking away from their attack on the First Amendment. We're not walking away from their attack, you know, from their committing election fraud we actually move forward. And that's what this movement is about. This movement is inspiring you to stand up on your own two feet, to recognize what truth is, what freedom is, what health is, and to fight. And right now, one of the most important things everyone can do is to let everyone out there know, whether you're in Massachusetts or whether you're outside of Massachusetts, wherever you are, you need to let people know in Massachusetts that we're not backing down. We're escalating our movement. We've got orders for another thousand more lawn signs. We're getting more volunteers more donations or donations are just escalating and we need that because right now the most important thing is we need to let everyone in massachusetts know that we are moving forward with our write-in campaign and it's really easy people just write in my name dr dr period shiva s-h-i-v is in victory a is in america on the write-in space on the ballot that's what we need to people to do and what i want to also request of people that that are out there is i really need your help to um, to uh, support us by uh, by donating to our campaign because we need to raise about two hundred fifty thousand dollars to um, to get our um, uh, our word out there on TV and major media on TV and major media. So what I want people to do is if and I want to sh share with you one of the gifts that I'm going to do, one of the support things I'm going to do for people to help our campaign is the following. Anyone who helps our campaign right now, uh, between now and the next few days, it's a special offer that if you donate to our campaign, what I need of you to do is just donate $5, okay? And if you go to the site, shivaforsenate.com, and if you donate $5, what you do is you will get this thing that we used to, it used, we used to charge $25, uh, but you will get this uh, entire tool here, which is, my ebook, System and Revolution, which will teach you how all systems operate so you can understand political systems. Uh, you know, your body is a system, any system, the principles, and then you'll also get access to this tool called Your Body, Your System. So if you go to Your Body, Your System, those of you outside of the United States, you can go there and get the offer. For those, those of you in the United States, you can, when you donate, you get the book and you get access to this tool, which normally goes, again, for a very low price 25 you get a tool that helps you answer a set of questions you do self-assessment to understand what kind of body system you are that's that red dot and that red dot will move then you get to understand the
the black dot, which is how you're deviating from you, and then how different foods and supplements and exercise can get you back to you. So that's what I'm offering to people um, that if you're kind enough just to take a few moments and donate $5, we want to get about 50,000 people to donate five bucks because we need to raise a quarter of a million dollars and we just put, about, put them right into TV and radio advertising. By the way, no, I don't get paid. None of our volunteers get paid. Everyone does this because this is part of working people united. The other offer we want to make is anyone, if you go here and you donate $50 or more, as many of you know, so that's 50 or more right here. If you donate 50 or more, I have a special tool that I've created, a course set, which I can help train you to become systems thinkers, um, a way to understand not only the body as a system, but all systems. I've created a, a five-part course uh, through my institute called Shiva for, uh, called, sorry, systemshealth.com, where, because I created it, um, the course set, which normally goes, which is a basic course that is called Foundations of Systems Health, Foundations of Systems Health. And when you register, everything right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go to this course, this course is a four, uh, sorry, five part course series. And then you actually get access to, oops, let me go here. Um, the, the course series actually includes one, two, three, four, five courses, plus it includes the book, plus you can get certified. And then you get access to an entire portal where you can educate many other people. It's the learn, teach, and serve model. So, you're not live, I don't think, on Instagram anymore. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. Um, so, um, if you, so that's one of the things that I need people to do is to go to Shiva for Senate, either donate five or $50 tonight because we need to raise 250 K. So we're going to put into radio and TV. We already have four major billboards running. We have, we've printed up about a million and a half of these. Our volunteers are sharing them. Literally they're on the ground rain or whatever it is out there, wind, and they're out there putting these. Uh, cards, handing them out to all different people. And then we have lawn signs and bumper stickers, et cetera. But we need to let everyone know that we are we didn't walk away from a fight. We're in fact escalating the fight for the write-in campaign. And that is our response when the state attacks the First Amendment. That is our response when the state colludes with Twitter to shut down one of us, a US Senate federal candidate. And just step back and remember this campaign is for working people uniting. When one of us comes from below and we play by the rules and we win, and in fact, headed for a landslide victory, they cheat. So we don't walk away, we fight. So I need everyone out there to donate $5 or donate $50 or whatever you want. But I wanna offer you something because I never like taking something for nothing. That's what I want people to do. So please go and do that today. And remember, the question I'm putting forward before you, because we poked the bear, we exposed their election fraud. And instead of fighting in the open market of ideas, these really insidious people call up Twitter, which is a complete violation of the First Amendment, which is why the First Amendment was why people shed their blood and got that amendment and shut us down. That's what they just did. Okay? It's a violation of the First Amendment. We're not going to let them get away with that either. So, anyway, I need all of you to start fighting. That's what we need. We need people to get upset. It's not sufficient it, uh, that people, exactly, anti-slap, right? Um, especially when it comes to political officials. That's what the, the First Amendment was created for, so we could completely critique our political officials. So anyway, be well, everyone. Be the light. Support this fight. We must win. We're escalating our movement. Write in Dr. Shiva for U.S. Senate. Thank you.